How are you? Thanks for coming back. Thanks for doing this. Thank you for, you know, pressing play. Sometimes, sometimes you never know when someone's going to press play on, on uh, something you make. And, and that can be frustrating, you know, sometimes you just, uh, I don't know if you're a creative or you want to be a creative, but sometimes when you, you know, you want to put something out into the world, you're not sure how people are going to respond. Like re reciprocate that. You're not sure how those people are gonna say, you know, I really like that content. You know, some people might might say, I like that from the shadows. You might hear someone DM you in five years and say, I've been watching your work, good job. You know, we have a lot of instant likes and pats on the back, and, but you never um you never know how you you know when someone pats you on the back, you can uh you can feel it. You can feel that pat on the back. You can um, you can feel that intent. But when someone just hits a button and you're not sure if they were just bored and they were just scrolling. You know, people don't know how to write a message sometimes and say, you know, I'm gonna put this in your, I'm gonna put this in the comments. I'm gonna give you a nice critique. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what I like and what I don't like. And that's all right, because you know, things are moving fast, so. I appreciate you coming in here, and um, I think time is the most valuable thing. And uh, so, why don't we spend a little time together? And uh, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, I just had a few things I, I was thinking about today. You know, I think I think a lot of people are saying, "Wow, this COVID nineteen thing is crazy. This COVID nineteen thing is uh, it's keeping me down." Other people are saying, wow, the air is getting clean. You're seeing dolphins come around places they haven't been in years. You're seeing, um, you're seeing wild animals running streets that we've never seen them run around them, or it's rare to see them. You're seeing bigger birds flying around. You're seeing, you're seeing you know, people, uh, you know, people that are a little more in tune with Mother Nature saying, oh man, she's telling us to chill. You know, mom, mom sent us to the room and said, hey, get your life together. And I don't know if it's really telling us to pause, right? I think I think the machine is, is beating. You hear the drums. You're hearing people stomping their feet. We're about three weeks into this. So you got these people just kind of itching itching to get back to work. They're itching to be moving fast, hopping to Camaro and hit 95 down the highway, you know? Get out of my way. But I think a lot of these people forget that there's a trap when that happens. And I guess I'm just, you know, I've been torn lately. I want to know how you feel about this, but or at least what you're thinking, or let you think about it, you know, you can tell me. But there's this, it seems like there's this ideology in America, in the United States, where we gotta keep pushing, we gotta keep progressing, we gotta keep moving, we gotta keep going. We gotta get back on that treadmill. We gotta keep running hard. You gotta live your best life. You have to you have to keep climbing these ladders. You gotta shake hands with these people. But then we can but then you continue to hear the stories of it, you know. You continue to hear these stories of people committing suicide, doesn't matter what, what tax bracket they're in. You, you're hearing people stressed out, people's marriages are falling apart. Doesn't matter what their tax bracket. People are always like, oh, I don't want, I don't want my kids hanging out with the poor children. I don't want, to, I don't want my kids hanging out with the poor kids. Yeah, I don't know how many times you talk to kids that have gone to private schools and nice universities, and they're out there getting in trouble too. They're out there hanging out with the bad crowd. Their kids are out there finding their way to heroin. We have an opioid epidemic in this country. I don't think it's gone away. And it's hitting everybody. 
And so I just, uh, it makes me want to just think like, what are, what are we really trying to do? You know, some people want to say, Hey, we're, um, you know, you got to get in the race and you got to push it. You got to get ahead of everyone. But I wonder where are we going? Where is everyone going? You know, if you get in a race, that means someone put a destination out there for you. Someone says, hey, you need to go this far. But who that, who was that person? Who was that person? And, and why are you living by their rules? Now, I think rules are important. It keeps life structured. You know, no one's scrummaging through your house. There's too many people. There's so many people in the world. We got to have some kind of control. We got to have some kind of boundaries. But sometimes I wonder why, like, why, why, why some people are always say you got to get in this race. You got to, you got to, you got to beat everybody. Because the weird thing to me is like people always want to use sports analogies. But sports are just made up. We make them up. Like how? Who would be the best player in basketball if you just made the courts, you know? Five feet wider. Ten feet long. You change the rule or two. Someone might, you know, the greats that we've seen, they'd probably be someone else. And you might be thinking, oh, no, man, that's impossible. But that, but we like to just take what we've seen and what we've known and throw it backwards, or throw it into a new scenario. But how many times in life do we, how many times in life do you, do you even see yourself fall into a trap or fall into a situation or run into a wall that you, you like, when did that wall, when did that wall get you? How did I slam my finger in the door? Who hasn't slammed their finger in the door? I doubt you're a mindless individual. I'm sure you're taking care of a lot of important things, but you still slam your finger in the door, you stub your toe. You say something mean or nasty to a friend or a lover or even a parent or something. So we're not perfect. And but we would like to think when we when we think about what if scenarios, how that situation's gonna play out. And we can even run simulations. You know, we have these advanced algorithms saying, oh, this is a, they have a 90% chance they're gonna win, but it's not a hundred percent. So algorithms don't give us a hundred percent chance. You still gotta play. You still gotta get in there. You still gotta try. And uh, you know, it just makes me want why? Like, what are we running for? And I think you know, in the in the states, we have three hundred and fifty plus million people here. So everyone's got a different idea. Everybody's gonna live a different life. Sometimes I think like people are just pulling each other down and people are just, you know, trying to trying to stack as much as possible so they can feel like they're standing taller. And it seems like it doesn't like it doesn't matter where where you get in life. People are gonna forget who's gonna talk about you. Who's gonna say you've shaken so and so's hand? How many times have we uh you know, did your parents ever talk about a celebrity from their from their era, or your grandparents or something? And you're like, "Wow, who are you talking about?" And they're like, "You don't know Jane. You don't know Jane at all." And then you, and then I think you know, for my cohort, I think we're starting to do that. You know, you talk to a. You talk to some kid in middle school and ask them what they think about Usher. They probably don't know. And Usher was huge. Like, there's going to be a time when people are like, oh, what's, who's Beyonce? And Beyonce's a goddess to a lot of people.
but even Beyonce is going to have her time. You know, I think we forget that it's like we look at Leonardo da Vinci and we look at Albert Einstein or you even look at the people that have been horrible in history. It's like Hitler hasn't even been dead for 100 years. That's a long time for us. But uh, in the scheme of things, it's not that long. So why is everyone just pulling everyone down? You know, I get so irritated walking around cities and we, you know, how many cities do we have to see a bunch of homeless people? And I'm not saying it's an easy issue. I'm not saying it's a snap of the finger. That's another problem. It's a lot of us can see that we can see what we want to make better, but we don't even know where to start. But I think the conversation needs to continue to happen. How do we get innovation? How do we get greatness? But how do we make sure that we're bringing other people with us? We got to put more people on our backs. This whole, I did it by myself, pull myself up on bootstrap. I didn't need no help. It's a bunch of garbage, if you ask me. Because if you're speaking some kind of language, that's that's not that's not your parents taught you language or a book. That's that's thousands of years of of people hammering away, chipping away, getting this algorithm in your head, giving us better ways to think, to strategize, to view the world. You know, you put a pair of pants on. Someone had to perfect those pants. You disrupt an industry. Someone had to make that industry to give you that idea how to make it better. And you know, you read someone's biography. And then you put it down, you spend you spend a month reading Elon Musk's biography. That guy's story's not even done yet. So how do you even know how it's going to turn out? And you only spent a month with it. If you took extra long, you took a lot of notes, highlighted everything. It's only a month of your life. And were you reading it 24-7? Probably not. So you're reading Elon Musk's life and you're reading someone else's life. That's your life. That's your book. And you're going through more things and more in, in your life while you're reading that book than that book has inside of it. And a lot of people want to say, oh, I circled these 10 things that this person did. And I, I have the secret of how they got to where they are. But everyone's story is different. You never know if this man was feeling troubled or suicidal and then called his mom. You know, or he had, a, he had a girlfriend that's not around anymore. But she gave him a nice back rub. And that reduces stress levels and he could go into work the next day and execute. No one's talking about that back row. How many people are on the verge of snapping? And then someone came in and gave him a nice foot massage, you know? Old friend called him out of the blue, say, hey, I really like what you did 10 years ago. So I think like in this time, you know, we see a lot of posts, a lot of people saying, you know, you got to go out there. You got to get these skills. You got to level up. You got to hustle. You got to be excellent. I mean, what is excellence, you know? I was looking at the pyramids of Giza today. Someone took an aerial shot. And, people, and we're always debating whether aliens built those. But you start looking at how crazy our technology is. And, and to me, it goes, man, a damn alien came here and helped us build a, a, a mound of dirt. Because really, that's what it is. 
They didn't take us to a. They didn't take us to another galaxy. And we got skyscrapers that are much larger. They didn't teach us how to make a skyscraper. You know, they didn't put us on the moon. We don't have our moon base there. So I'm just wondering, you know? Yeah, we might. And there's always going to be those people. So this speech, does, you know, this speech is, um, I'm, it's not like I'm going to stop people. Like the world's going to stop and say, oh. Maybe you're right, we should pause. This is just for people that are on the fence or people that are being told that they need to live their life a certain way. Some other people are telling them, this is what you gotta do to be successful. But that's success in someone else's eyes. That's a, that's a picture someone else has painted for you. And, and if you don't agree with that, and if you don't align with that, then you know there's probably, there's, a, there's another way. There's hundreds, there's thousands, there's billions of people in this world, all living in different ways. And they're all in the same place. We're all going to the same place. So what's the rush? Like, where are we going? What are we trying to get to? The most money? A lot of people think they're going to be the richest person in the world, but guess what? It's going to be one person. So you're gonna take a shot. You wanna be the one in a one in a seven billion at one point in time. That's a wild, that's a wild place to be. That's a wild, that's a wild, that's a wild goal. You might do a lot of things you don't want to do. Just to try to be that one thing. You know, you know how, mu how much is enough? I think we kind of get, I think we get lost in this country. We want, you know, people want money, but I think a lot of people, they forget that they, there's a few things they want. They want to take care of their family. You know, I think um, I wanted to have a lot of money. But uh, I, I think I've realized a lot of it's because I wanted to feel safe. I want to feel protected. And if any year has taught us anything in a short period of time, that you could have a lot of money, a lot of money, it'd be a real good spot. And things could go sideways. You're not always safe. This little invisible ghost that's going around playing hide and seek with everyone, it's stopping a lot of rich people from moving. seen a lot of people with big old houses and pools unlimited margaritas going crazy and being upset taking naps in their three cars in their garage because they really just want some connection they want to touch a loved one I don't think there's an answer. I really don't. I just want to start the conversation. I want to have conversations with people who either disagree or agree, or maybe someone's on the fence, or maybe you have a different point of view. But that's where I stand right now. And my opinions can change. I used to want a damn pirate ship in my house when I was a kid, when I was 14. I want a damn pirate ship. I, I made myself a promise that I'd always want that. I don't want that anymore. So opinions can change. And uh, I think it's great when someone can bring a new case, put it on the table and say, have you seen this evidence? But I think a lot of people are getting pushed in the wrong direction right now. I think a lot of people have bright eyes for the wrong things. A lot of people get in relationships with people they shouldn't be in relationships with. A lot of people dressing to impress people that they don't even really want to have in their circle. Trying to make a lot of people happy that won't even make you happy. And 
and I hope I can just start a conversation. I hope I can think about it a little more because it's not easy. Sometimes it's not that you don't know where to go, you just know you can go a lot of places. You can go a lot of places. So it's not even a fork in the road. It's a damn rake with a bunch of different, a bunch of different paths, a bunch of chutes and ladders. And you're not really sure which way that, that slide's gonna take you. And one might be wet, one might be dry as hell. But some people like the dirt road. And some people like to slip and slide. And the people, those people are going to fight because they like different things. They like different outcomes. They like different experiences. It's just something I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out where everyone's trying to go. I hear a lot of people telling me I need to get in this race. So a lot of people, you know, I used to think I was behind. I don't know what I was behind. People getting good grades in school, people that were dating. I used to be jealous of guys that were hooking up with girls in the back of the gym or at the, at the, at the high school party. We go to Pizza Hut and everyone's flirting. I'm in the back. I'm in the back just saying, get, I guess you give me another pepperoni. You know, I want Ryan's, I'll take Ryan's extra cheese because he's over there on Sally. You know, you know, when Tiffany just walked in and now Ryan is on her too. And look at Mike and Tyler. They're with the twins. But, you know, you go through life and then uh, you realize, man, I'm glad I had, I'm glad I didn't fall in love with the twins. You know, the problem, uh, it wasn't for me. If you're young, you probably don't see it yet. But if you, if you had some years and you had some of that social media, you can see that might have been a bad decision. That might have been the wrong thing to fall in love with. And things went a little different. You might have sold your soul. Because there's a lot of, a lot of women I was like, you probably would have had some children with. <laughs> and I'm so glad I don't have a child right now. Especially in COVID-19. And that's for me. I'm still trying to take care of myself. I'm real proud of all my friends that get, have it together. Super parents. I hope I can be that one day. Um, but I just don't want people, I don't want people uh, falling in love with things because people are saying, hey, you need to fall in love with this. You need to chase this. You need to go real hard. You need to get. You need to go extra hard for this thing that you don't even want. It's like the. It's like a. It's like a parent that's putting you in piano lessons when you just want to. You know. You want to be a water skier. You want to be a water skier. So, you know, some people just want to, some people want to be the best manager at Cracker Barrel. Another person wants to open a hotel. Someone else wants to bartend down in the Bahamas. Someone else is trying to open an animal shelter. Someone else is trying to start the next big tech company. But if you're, you know, if someone important in your life is a lawyer and they're saying, hey, what are you doing? 
You're so freaking behind, you don't even realize it. You gotta go to law school. But all you want to do is help the animals. You want to you wanna release the caged elephants. Are you behind? People want to threaten you if you're going to have some hard times. You're going to have some hard times no matter what. It doesn't matter who you are. And that degree isn't going to save you. It certainly can alleviate pain. There's a certain place that you should try to maybe get. And maybe that's it. Maybe that's the race. If you want to cover your overhead, you want to be able to put a roof over your head, but you know, you can't stop a tornado from coming. You can't stop a damn earthquake. That shit come in there and shatter your life, even if you plan for that. And if you weren't doing what you loved and that shit comes out of nowhere, that's gotta be rough. It's gotta be real rough. So, I don't know. That's just been what's on my mind lately. Trying to find those things that you love. You know, I kind of love doing this. That's why I'm doing it. Some people think it's easy. Some people say, how are you doing that? I mean, I get two different perspectives. And you just got to kind of do that. You know, you got to see, you got to find out what, what are those things that you do when you have free time. Like I said, you might, you, you hear a little whisper. You go, nah, that's not gonna make money. So you put it aside. It comes back and whispers in your ear again. You're like, nah. Because you're thinking a wrong outcome. Is that gonna give you joy today? Whether you finish the project or not? Then I think you should do more of that and see what happens. Sans mieux.